What's going on YouTube? It is your boy Mr. Baboon back with a reaction video. This time we have Genghis Khan Part 4 for the reaction series. We are reacting to. <clears throat> so, uh, if you guys haven't seen Part 1, 2, or 3, go check it out. They, they would definitely be out before this one comes out. This one will be dropping on the 9th. October on the 9th of October this one will be dropping so make sure you guys like comment subscribe check the description I've got the channel and the link for the video down below if you guys want to check it out you guys can <clears throat> Oof, I'm a little tired okay so we're gonna get, get into this that's like Two, the dawn of a new century. Temujin Khan now rivals Jamaka in power. The future of the Mongols could fall to either of them. And Temujin, already a radical, is about to institute yet another set of revolutionary changes to a society that has hardly changed at all in a thousand years. History. One year after the defeat of the Taichit, an aging Ong Khan sent Temujin on a new campaign to, once again, plunder the Tartars. Having now grown as a leader and a warrior, Temujin introduced new changes and tactics which would forever alter the way That's battle true. was done on the steppe. See, traditional Mongol raids had warriors rushing into camps while their victims either fled or stayed to defend their possessions. The fighting would then devolve into chaos, as the raiders raced to loot and pillage, trying to grab the best prizes for themselves, rather than chasing down enemy warriors. Temujin realized that these acts of personal greed got in the way of a more complete victory, and left his troops vulnerable to counterattack from resentful enemies. This raid would be different. He declared that no looting would take place until total victory had been accomplished. Looting would then be done in an organized fashion, with all goods being brought to Temujin and then redistributed among his followers, using much the same system that mountain hunters used to distribute kills at the end of a group hunt. Temujin also ordered that a share of the wealth be allocated to anybody widowed or orphaned as a result of the raid. This ensured that what had happened to his mother when his father was killed would never again happen to another Mongol family. These changes guaranteed him the support of the poorest people in the tribe, and inspired loyalty among his soldiers, sure. who now knew that their families would be cared for if they fell in battle. But these changes alienated some of his more well-off followers, as it denied them their traditional right to distribute prizes to their underlings as they saw fit. Still, it was a trade worth the making, as this move greatly centralized the power of his rule and incentivized loyalty. In enriching wow. Temujin, his followers were also enriching themselves. This new system was a resounding success. For the second time, Temujin defeated the Tartars, and by postponing the looting until the end of the campaign, the army amassed more wealth than ever before. There was, however, a new problem. In keeping with their usual policy of executing leaders and integrating everybody else, they had now captured almost an entire army and all of the civilians. The old method had worked great when they were dealing with a clan of hundreds, but the Tartars numbered in the thousands. It was imperative to Temujin to end the vicious, constant conflicts between steppe lineages, and it seems to him that integrating everyone under one unified banner was the only way to achieve this. But in order to bring the numerous Tartars into his Khanate, he would need the full support of his followers. He summoned a Kurultai to discuss a solution, and the one they found was vicious but effective. They summoned all of the Tartar men and ordered each one to walk by a cart. Every male taller than the linchpin, which held the wheels on the cart, was executed. Once the older and larger Tartar males were culled, the remaining men and their families were taken in as full members of his tribe. Sure. Temujin adopted another Tartar orphan and took two aristocratic Tartar women as additional wives. That handled, Temujin had yet more ancient traditions to abolish. If he really wanted to establish lasting huh. peace among the steppe tribes, he would have to radically transform their military and tribal system. He would have to do away with the traditional system of kin groups altogether. He organized his warriors into squads of ten, who were then ordered to live and fight together. 
These groups were of mixed origin and lineage. By forcing people to serve as units rather than kin groups, Temujin managed to break their ancient lineages and ethnic identities. Each squad oh. began with the oldest as their leader, but they could elect any man among them if they chose. Ten of these squads formed a company of 100 men, one of whom they elected to be their leader, and ten of those companies formed a battalion of 1,000 individuals. The leader of each battalion was chosen by Temujin, further cementing his power. And under the new system, all members of the tribe, regardless of age or gender, had to perform public service for the benefit of the tribe, including caring for herds, gathering fuel, cooking, repairing weapons, or even performing music to entertain the troops. And just like that, there were no more lineages or classes. Everyone worked for the benefit of the tribe, and everyone reaped the rewards. Shit. As I'm in the midst of applying for residency right now, Shit. wish me luck, Grammarly has again Great. been a lifesaver with my application. Finally, Temujin created a closed oh. territory designated as the homeland of the Mongols. For its location, he chose the sacred site where he had hidden from the market raiders in his youth, and he closed it to all outsiders except the Mongol royal family, who would continue to bury their dead and conduct ritual gatherings there for the next two centuries. This land became the secret ritual center of the new Mongol identity. Shit. After almost 20 years of work, Temujin now controlled most of the Mongols, but Jamaka was still a large and looming threat. Ong Khan was getting older, but it was not yet clear who would take over for him. So Temujin decided to force Ong Khan's hand, and proposed that his eldest son, Jochi, marry one of Ong Khan's daughters. This would be an acknowledgement of Temujin as his heir. Ong Khan's eldest son, who had no following of his own, was envious of Temujin's power and relationship with his father, and strongly encouraged Ong Khan to reject the proposal, despite the fact that doing so would be a grave insult. Ong Khan was swayed, and he rejected Temujin outright. Fearing a military response, though, Ong Khan quickly devised a nefarious plot to rid himself of Temujin through trickery. He sent Temujin a message saying that he had changed his mind, setting a wedding date and inviting Temujin to come alone to celebrate with the family. So Temujin set out with a small band to see his patron, confident that he was about to secure his position to succeed Ong Khan as future ruler of the Central Steps. Then, just one day's ride from Ong Khan's court, one of Temujin's allies rode up with terrible news. Ong Khan had an army nearby, preparing to wipe him out. Temujin was trapped. Wildly outnumbered, separated from his allies with the enemy at his heels, he could not afford to fight. He did the only thing he could do. He ordered his small group to scatter in all directions and fled. Temujin was devastated. This was supposed to be his moment of triumph, when he reunited with his followers far from Ong Khan's territory, he found that only a few remained. Some of his relatives had deserted in a panic, others had simply gotten lost on the steppe. Now what few remained faced starvation in their remote exile, and his newly united people were now without their leader. Temujin resolved to act quickly while Ong Khan basked in the glory of his victory. He sent messengers to his tens of thousands of followers, hoping that they would follow his order to assemble. And amazingly, they did. Imagine tens Shit. of thousands of people, separated from their leader but still converging, maintaining order and discipline. This was the effect of Temujin's new discipline, his new societal structure. This army thundered toward the unsuspecting Ong Khan, who feasted and celebrated in his palatial golden yurt. Loyal followers had gone so far as to leave fresh horses for Temujin's army along the way, so they could continue night and day without resting. In the middle of the night, and without warning, Shit. Temujin's army completely surrounded the enemy camp and crashed down on Ong Khan's court, days before he thought they'd arrive. Nobles fled in all directions, including Ong Khan and Jamaka, who managed to escape the fighting and flee to the nearby Naiman tribe, the greatest of the tribes not yet conquered by Temujin. Jamaka made it safely across the Naiman border, but Ong Khan was stopped by a guard who couldn't believe that this haggard old man was the great Khan he claimed to be, and killed him. Temujin now turned his Damn. sights to the Naiman, Jamaka's Damn. new ally. Now, at last, the decisive battle Ooh. against Jamaka had finally, finally come. For the first time, Temujin's new military organization would be put to the test in an all-out okay. battle. 
Squads of ten advanced silently in the pre-dawn darkness, so the enemy couldn't see how many people were attacking or from which direction. The squads would then attack and then immediately flee in different directions, making retaliation impossible. After hours of these harrying hit-and-run attacks, Temujin advanced with a long line of troops who fired their arrows and then melted back behind the next line, their replacements. The Naiman attempted to counter this by spreading out a long, thin line to meet the attacking archers and avoid being flanked. In response, Temujin switched tactics yet again, rearranging his men into a narrow, deep configuration which allowed them to chisel through the thinned Naiman lines. Victory was swift and complete. Jamaka fled again and, in a poetic twist of fate, ended up hiding in the woods just as Temujin once had as a boy, himself now a disgraced outcast bandit at the age of 40. In time, his followers found and delivered him to Temujin. Jamaka asked only for an honorable death, which Temujin granted. It was finally over. Temujin... Damn. Are you just gonna leave it on that? had won. At long last, he was to become the Khan of all Mongols. Huh, okay, well, we got another episode coming up. Episode 5. So, let me know what you guys thought or down below in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications. I'm gonna go ahead and end this one right here so I can get number 5 recorded and then number 6 recorded. I'm a little behind on scheduling today, so I'm going to try to make everything go by fast, relatively, and be good, hopefully. So, like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Let me know what you guys think about this down below in the comments. Positivity is key. Motivation is key. Happiness is key. I'll see you guys in the next one. You guys stay safe. Watch out for each other. I'll see you guys in the next one.